right, so officially welcome to the NBR show. You know, my name is Natasha B. Russell, aka NBR, and I'm your host. And uh, a big part of what I do every day, people, is to help women and men like yourself out there achieve your goals and your dreams. You know, we all got this big, grandiose vision, I hope, for our life. We got these goals. We got these dreams. And I essentially help you do that, create that vision. What does it look like? And then I help you create the strategy because you know what, people? We need a plan to succeed. And then as your coach, I help you actually execute because that's where a lot of times we fall off. You know, we're we're excited. We want to do all these great things, but then we don't know how to begin or life happens and we fall off so we don't ever start. Well, today's the day, people. Today's the day to start the dream, to start working toward your goals because I want you to know that it's possible. It is indeed possible, but you got to start. Absolutely, Corey. Says anything is possible. I see we got Ohio in the house. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so we got Trinidad and Tobago. We got Jamaica. We got Cameroon. We got Canada, the U.S. Waiting for you. And I'm just so grateful for you all. Again, welcome to the MBR show. Today's topic is growing your business. And I have the most phenomenal person joining me today, Rick McLennan. He's an amazing uh, coach, consultant, and speaker. I met Rick years ago when I was beginning my entrepreneurial journey, and he was lovely enough to meet with me for coffee and just to share some insights and give me some inspiration and some motivation on how to begin my business, how to grow my business. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, people. So thank you for joining me. A little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta. I have a PR firm, so public relations. I help brands get in the public eye. So if you have a company and you want to build your brand, my team will help you do just that. I'm also a certified, international certified transformation coach. So I help you again, achieve your goals and your dreams, maybe life goals, maybe business goals. And how do I do that? I do that through helping you build your confidence, learning how to communicate with confidence and effectively how to create a strategic plan. More importantly, I work with you on your mindset because a lot of times people it's our minds that holds us back. You know, we got this thing in here that we call the critter brain. You know, the critter brain that says what's possible because it's out there to protect us. So when you have this big grandiose dream, you know, the critter brain might come in and say, hey, can you really achieve that? But I want you to know today that you can. Absolutely, you can. Anybody who's gone before you and has done great things, I'm telling you, it started with the vision. So where do we all begin, people? Think about the vision. What do you want in your life? What do you want in your business? What does it look like? Paint that picture visually. And then you gotta think about the strategy, which is the roadmap to your success. How do you get from A to B to C to D? How do you get from where you need to go? Lastly, you gotta execute. And there's some other things that, of course, fall in suit with that. Like, you gotta be confident. You gotta be able to communicate. You gotta be able to be consistent. Because we live in a world where we sometimes we expect instant gratification, right? But that's not how the world works, people. We don't get instant gratification. We got to build. And so you got to be consistent in what you do. You got to be courageous enough to go for what you want. And then you just got to continually execute day in and day out, day in and day out. Execute the vision. All right? So thank you all for joining me. I have the most amazing Rick McLaren. Mick, Mille Mick Rick McLennan, my apologies, Rick, who's joining me today, and he is a successful business owner. A little bit about Rick. His bio is extensive, people, and I'm going to allow him to introduce himself to you all, but his career has spanned more than 30 years, people. Many of you may not even be 30 yet, so he's been out working on businesses, helping businesses grow for over 30 years, three decades, people. He's worked in sales, marketing, business ownership, and consulting. He's earned many achievement awards. He's a great lecturer at the University of Alberta at Grant McEwen. He's a, the Edmonton Direct Marketing Association of MarTech College. So he's out in the schools. He's helping our cohorts gain knowledge and expertise in the realm of entrepreneurship, which is so important. And uh, he has a franchise with COX Target Media out of Atlanta. I didn't know that one, Rick. I'm excited to hear more about that. And he's a certified leadership trainer with the Maxwell Group. Does anybody know what the Maxwell Group is? If you do, say yes. Comment below. Do you know what the Maxwell Group is? I personally love the Maxwell Group. You know, John Maxwell is a powerful man. He has faith and he 
builds leaders every day. And that's my mission, people. I'm building leaders every day. I want us to be the, our best selves. And every day, it's a process. We continue to grow. And we should never stop growing. So no matter where you are today, people, I want you to know that tomorrow can be a totally different limelight. That tomorrow is full of endless opportunities. But the truth is, you've got to believe it to receive it. You've got to believe it to receive it. All right, Rick, where are you? Send me a hello. Send me a request to join my live again. I see all these people joining in. Loving that, loving that. Welcome, welcome to the NBR show. I'm all about inspiring, motivating, empowering people like yourself to truly believe in yourself, your God-given talents and abilities, skills, and for you to go after that, to pursue your purpose with passion, and to become everything that you know you were created to be. And I say this, people, because you know what? We all have a purpose. We all do. We are all born on a purpose for a purpose. So what's yours? Feel free to comment below. Are you a business owner? Tell me. What kind of business are you running? Um, are you thinking of starting your business? What kind of business do you want to start? Feel free to put in the comment section below. And as we have Rick join us. Uh, yeah, Rick, there should be a request to join. I'll send you one if I can as well. If there's a business idea that you have and you need help with, feel free again to put it in the comment section, all right? Because we have someone who's going to be able to help you answer those questions, and I'm excited. Hey, Rick. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm wonderful. It's sunny in Calgary, as you know. We're finally getting some summer weather here. Yes, it's fantastic. <laughs> yes, I, I was thinking that my toes were starting to wet, but no, the sun has come out. Everything is fantastic. Is it not? Yeah. Because, you know, we, like even yesterday, we got a lot of rain. I was on the south end of the city, and I had to come back to the northwest where I live in Sage Hill, and then transfer back to downtown for a viewing. And the rain was coming down on Deerfoot. I was like, "Oh my gosh, what is happening?" <laughs> yeah, no, it was uh, the last couple of weekends. Of course, you know the story. What do you call what comes after two days of rain in Calgary? The sunshine, I hope. Monday. Monday. <laughs> I haven't heard that one yet, but yeah. <laughs> Back to work, right? Well, welcome. Back to work. Back to work in the sunshine. Back so to work in the sunshine. Yeah. Well, welcome to the NBR show. I'm so grateful for you. You know, I was saying to the viewers, when I met you, I was just starting out. And you were so kind enough to meet me for coffee and share some knowledge and expertise. And I appreciate that. So today we're talking about growing your business. But before we dive in, I want to learn a little bit about you and the viewers want to hear a little bit about you. So why don't you share who are you? Well, I am, I'm not as Calgary as you are because I moved here when I was two. Oh, wow. So if you're born and raised, you're, you're one of the few, so welcome or congratulations. <laughs> but yes, I've been in this city a long time. I really like this city. Um, my dad was just getting out of the service. He'd served in World War II in Korea. And so we moved here back in the <clears throat> very early 1960s and since then i've gone to school here and just enjoyed what a beautiful city we had wonderful and so well what do you do rick i know i sort of gave a little overview very quick overview on your bio but what do you do every day how do you help your clients well you know natasha it was an amazing uh, overview and i thank you very much for your kind words and you were wonderful to meet with all of those years ago oh, thank you. Uh, because it's your enthusiasm and your passion for what you do and I've watched you and we've been together in some other other events and I've watched you grow and develop and you are doing an amazing job thank you so what I do is I'm a consultant what my product the service is is we really help clients become dispensable mm. and what that means is you want to work on your business and not in and if you look at our friend Michael Gerber, who wrote the E-Myth, his definition of a small business is for a bit, something to be called a business or for an enterprise to be called a business, it must be able to operate without the owner there. And so to be able to do that, you have to be able to replicate and duplicate yourself. And that's what we do. So we help clients build that model. Love it. Do you hear that, people? So in order for a business to be able to become the person who cannot be attached to the business what i'm hearing you be able to walk away from your business and it's still operating functionally that's a true business 
That is very much a true business. And what that gives you, though, is for that to happen, you have to have enough revenue, you have enough, enough people in place, enough processes in place. And that gives the business owner freedom so that you can go and do whatever you want. If you want to build houses for Habitat, if you want to go sailing around the world, you now have that wherewithal and the time to be able to do that. And that's the big deal. It's because mm -hmm. you have to have them both. Time without money doesn't really help. So money without time still doesn't work. But if you've created that piece where you've got them both, then you have, and the only way to get there, of course, is to have incredible client connection, incredible service, all of the things that you need to do to be able to get to that point. Also meaning a great team in place. Absolutely. Teamwork, like I say, makes the dream work, right? John Maxwell. <laughs> is, that, is that from John Maxwell? Absolutely. <laughs> well, certainly he uses it all. Whether, um, he, whether he coined it or not, I'm unsure, but he, it is one of his tenets. Wonderful. I love it. I've always been saying that when I used to work in corporate, and like, I never heard that before. And I was like, yes, teamwork makes the dream work. You know, you can only do so much on yourself, but when you can bring a team in on the vision and help you to support in that and to grow your vision, that is where true wealth begins for me and true freedom begins, you know? So for all the viewers, we have questions already coming in. This is wonderful, Taylor. I just want to give you a chance to talk a little bit about yourself when you're not working, your hobbies, interests. What do you do for fun? Well, since we're living so close to the Rocky Mountains, one of my passions is downhill skiing. Mm -hmm. And so I, myself and a few others, we head out to sunshine on a regular basis and just really enjoy nature at its fullest here, here in the Canadian Rockies. In the summertime, I have a motorcycle and I have a 1978 MGB. And I like to use both of those and tour, tour the province, enjoying some of the amazing, the amazing places that are there in the back roads and on the sides, the side streets that just really get you to have an enjoyment of what this province is all about. I love it. I love it. So you have a little bit of a fun side when you're not really in the office. <laughs> that is, and I, you know, and I work hard, hard enough to make sure I can get away and do those things on a regular basis. Oh, that's it really is about balance. Mm-hmm. And now it's the COVID, you know, a lot of people are struggling with the balance because for us, even as me, who has a daughter at home, now I'm homeschooling and doing assignments with her. Plus I'm my business from home and I'm doing my schooling as well. It can be quite overwhelming. So work-life balance, I know a lot of people are seeking that and you need to have the balance in life and in business to really enjoy the fruits of your labor, right? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't have balance, if that goes back to the, you've got time but no money or you've got money and no time to be able to get through any of it you need balance yes it's easy and i've gone through it but my naturally occurring highlights means that yes i've been at this for a while but i've gone through it you know off and on and it's a journey and it's a cycle and we ebb and flow but it is so easy to get caught up in gee i can work all day long and especially now you know, when a lot of us are working from a non-office environment, excuse me, environment. Yeah. It's real easy. Oh, after dinner, I'll just come back downstairs or I'll just rather than, you know what? Yeah. Let's set a scheduled time. We're going to work for this amount. We're going to take these kinds of breaks. And then when that time comes, you close it down. Because if you don't, work will expand the fill time provided. So true, Rick. I've been struggling with that myself. Is like, because before I'd go to the office, I know office i'm done i go get my daughter from the bus stop i come home for dinner but now that my office of course working from home it's like okay i put her to bed now i'm like okay what else can i get done because essentially i feel like i'm working part-time right now during this whole covid because i still gotta make time to school her to teach her to do her homework so i yeah it has for me i have to learn to just shut it down like when the day is over, it's over and tune it out and whatever needs to be done can wait till tomorrow. So I can definitely relate. For all of you who are out there, thank you for joining us. I already got questions, people. Today we are talking about how to Rick, again, has been in the industry for over 30 years, you know, and he has a wealth of knowledge. So feel free to put your comments or your question in the comment section below. Uh, do you have a business? Are you thinking of starting a business? What are some of the questions you have? This is your time to really pick his brain. So, Rick, we're going to jump right in. We got one question already from Storyteller. And it says, any advice for virtual business owners? 
it seems hard to build structure when people aren't physically there. Wow, that is a really, really good question. The and as a result of the opportunities we find ourselves in right now, more and more of us are moving to the online platform.、Mm -hmm. uh, in his book, Timothy Ferris wrote the Four Hour Workweek,、mm -hmm. and and the premise behind the book is he was in the on, online online pharmaceutical business, and so if you're dealing online, you have the world is out there, so Time zones don't always—it's not the same as brick and mortar.、Mm -hmm. And so again, one of the things in his book is about planning, about how do I offload some of my work to other parts of the world where they can be doing it while I'm sleeping, and I get come back and it's ready to go.、Mm -hmm. But it really is a challenge when you have the capacity to work 24/7. That if you don't shut it down, it will always be there.、Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult sometimes for us to get a handle on. The fact that our own time is probably the most important time we need to schedule. Work will always be there. Yes. There's just no question.、Mm -hmm. So, it, it is it is difficult, and we're all, I guess, learning more and more how to use the online platforms. But in balance with what our life needs to be, you know, get out and live your life. You know, I've met your daughter; she's wonderful, and you know that what a wonderful distraction to be able to take you away and spend the time. But I know you and I were talking, and this is to me is a great example. Yeah. Is that I was going to, you know, I said, why don't we meet on such and such a day? And you said, no,、uh, I have booked that time off for this. And I'm like, good on you, because <laughs> it's so easy for us to go. Okay, my stuff will be later. I'll, yeah. I'll go and do this. So congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. No, it's so important to book time for yourself, people. Now, just thinking about a virtual space. This is an opportunity. Is how I look at it because people are all around the world. Like at a seminar the other day, a webinar, and I had people from Nairobi, Kenya, the UK, USA, Canada, all parts. Because we have the platform to reach people all over the world virtually. So to you, storyteller, if you have a virtual business, it is actually a great opportunity, and it's really about structuring. I would say, Rick, right, structuring your time around the business. And thinking ultimately, who are you serving? You know, we always ask this question: Who is our target audience? Who is our target client? So you got to start thinking about what does your target audience need? How do they think? And how do you connect with them online? And that in itself is the ability to show up. And I say storytelling is critical to share what your product or service can do to meet their pain points. Would you agree, Rick? I absolutely would. You know, it's an interesting statement that you make. And you know, if you've had your business for a while, and in theory you have customers、mm -hmm. or clients, whichever name you want to to put on them, depending how they fit in the cycle, the best question to ask is first of all, who are the customers I have right now?、Mm -hmm. Who are they? And you make that list. Yes. The second question is, are they actually the customers that I want?、Mm. Because just because they're doing business with you, they may not be great customers. Sure. And so, the the whole concept of owning your own business is the desire to be business by design.、Mm. But it's supposed to be your design. The business works for you. You don't work for the business. And so, if you look at that and you say, you know what, this group of customers, these aren't really who I want. Great. Create the profile as you were just saying. Who do I want to do business with?、Mm -hmm. What does that person or that company look like?、Mm -hmm. Where are they located? Especially if you're online, the world becomes your oyster. But it's a big place. Hard to do business all over the place unless you're a Google or a Twitter or, or one of those.、Yeah. So where do you want to? Who do you want to do business with? What do they look like? You talked earlier about really scripting out all of the things that you want. Yes. Your customer needs to be one of those. What does that person, that company, look like? If you're going to be doing business with somebody, why not do with business with people you like? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> very true. I hope that answers your question, storyteller. Feel free to put another comment if you if you have more to add on.、Um, we got another question here for you, Rick,、um, from Ronaldo. Any advice on how to fully manage a business? So Ronaldo. Might be starting a business, 
but any tips you can give Rick on how to manage a business? What are some things people need to do that effectively? Big question, big open-ended question. I know, right? Uh, and we have how many hours are we on today? <laughs> we only got 30. Yeah, we don't got enough time. We're going to do that. The, the so, elevator pitch is here. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. Here, here's what I would say at the very beginning is that you need to know your numbers. Mm -hmm. And you need to really understand your numbers. Because the only way to manage your business is to understand the ebb and flow of the sales and of the cash and, and how things are moving through it's especially important to understand what your average sale is, especially understand what your average profitability is because, and you have to have context around your data because data without context is strictly numbers. Mm -hmm. But if you want to start the best place to manage your business is with things that you can control and that is your numbers. Okay. Great response. I hope that answers your question, Ronaldo. If you have a follow up, feel free to put in the comment section. We got another follow up from Storyteller. Great question here. If you have a lot of talent, skills, sorry, I just pushed down. If you have a lot of talent, skills, how do you decide which one to lead your business with? Wow. Again, a really great question because, you know, we watched through time. You know, you had the big, massive retailers, Sears, who I started my life with, mm -hmm. um, and the other, you know, the Bay and Eaton's and Woodward's and all of those who were big generalists. And so they offered everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. Walmart comes along and they offered everything to everybody, but at a cheap price. So the key, I guess, if for storyteller or whoever, is that, yes, we all have a number of talents we can bring to the table. Which are the ones that we can actually deliver on? Where can we make the best revenue with? And, and where is the best return on investment? So in other words, where do I get the biggest margin? Because at the end of the day, it's not we're not money driven, but a business needs to have money to survive. Absolutely. And so you're in, it's incumbent upon you as the business owner to make sure that whatever product or service you bring to the marketplace is one that's going to be able to return you ongoing revenue and profitability. Great response. So, and I guess the other piece is if you have a number of them and you're unsure, it's test, test, and retest. Take one out to the marketplace, find it if the marketplace wants it. Because the marketplace is brutal. It'll tell you quick like a bunny whether or not anybody's yeah. interested. I love it. It's true. You know, I say focus on what storyteller. Uh, Ronaldo, thank you so much, Rick. Um, oh, my pleasure. <laughs> um, I would say that you want to focus on what's going well. So whatever is going well in your business, do more of that. Whatever's not doing well, don't do that. Sometimes people feel like, well, everybody has an online book or an online course, so I need to follow suit. No, not necessarily. What's going to work well for your product or your service? And where you see uptake, whereas people are drawn to, focus on that. Saturate the market with that. Where people are not so keen on other parts of your business, then lay low on that. And that is where you're going to be able to monopolize. And that would be my addition to what Rick said. So and I would agree wholeheartedly. Sometimes being in a niche market has its real advantage. Right? Niche, which has always been a struggle for me, right? In the beginning, I wanted to help everybody. And I quickly realized if I was marketing to everyone, I was marketing to no one. And so it's so important when you go into business, you got to identify, again, who is your target audience, target ideal customer, client, create the customer avatar. What are their pain points? And then what is your solution? And you pair the two and then create your marketing strategy. And what we're finding nowadays is that storytelling sells. People want well, to care, right? It's all about the story. Well, when you think of back, back over the centuries, all our all of our history was done through oral stories. I mean, yeah. story. If you can master and you can tell a good story, people just are are drawn to you. I mean, when you you know yourself, if you sit down and you're listening to somebody who's telling a great story and they're engaging and it's fascinating. You'll spend hours and all of a sudden the time is gone and it's so storytelling is is an amazing talent. It is, right? And I feel like now because Rick, there's so much content out there, like essentially content is free. You can Google it and find it out. But it's to apply the content. And that's why consultants and coaches like us exist, you know, to help you apply it strategically to grow your business. 
So I love what you just said there. People, if you're in a business or you're starting a business, think about the story behind that. What are gonna? How can people relate to you as the client or as the product you're selling or the service? How can they? How can you make that relatable to what they need and become their top of mind choice? So uh, we got another question here. I have other questions for you too, but they keep coming, which is great. That's all right. I mean, it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, okay, so social media can seem oversaturated. What are some good marketing platforms outside of social media? Hmm, good, good question. Wow. Um, there is a move, of course, that everything old is now new again. Oh. Um, you asked what um, Cox was. That, that, I owned that franchise a couple of decades ago. Yeah. Cox Target Media is a subsidiary of, of, of Cox Enterprises. Cox Enterprises is the fifth largest media company in the U.S. They're massive. Um, but that was what we're seeing, and I've, and I've been on a number of different seminars as of late, is depending on what your product or service is. So if you're talking about, you know, if we have an internet, we're talking about international, it's one thing. But if you are in a particular community and it's type-based and you're working in that three to five mile radius around a store or in your city, Mm -hmm. uh, then there's real opportunities with some more of the direct stuff coming back. Uh, Canada Post has tracked their their uh, un unaddressed ad mail and those, and it's going up and continuing to be strong. Addressed mail is continuing to be very strong because, of course, you get nothing. Virtually, we get nothing in the mailbox anymore. So, yeah. from a marketing standpoint, if you can show up where there's less noise, there's more opportunity for you then to be noticed. Mm -hmm. And the first rule of marketing is to get noticed. Because if I can't get you, to, if I can't get noticed, how do I get to tell you my story? Absolutely. So there's more local stuff. Um, I'm seeing a real uptick in direct sales in terms of, uh, and I'm talking B two B, not B two C. Okay. And where we're doing way more training with direct sales people who are out and people, individuals are really enjoying the face to face again. Yes. They like the belly to belly. They like the fact that they can, hey, how are you? We can bump elbows at this time or whatever or, um, yeah. <laughs> or, or kick the foot whatever the things are but um anytime that you can get in and do a face-to-face -face, again totally depending on what your product or services mm -hmm. but the ability to build that relationship for that long-term repeat business and it's to me in any business operation if i can get a contract where i have ongoing revenue yes MRR, monthly recurring revenue. Yeah. That is gold because now I have and I can build on on that revenue and each month I can it can be bigger and bigger and that adds significant equity to your business when you are prepared to sell it you have this all these contracts that you can send forward. So that's why databases CRMs are vital tracking client decision making so that you can you know, you can help them be you know you can be a better service those are the things which doesn't mean that the online platforms aren't fantastic it's about where are my clients going to be and how do i just get in front of them i love it that's the key thing people is where are your clients are they online not online who's the demographic you know how do you reach them i love and just to clarify for those of you who are not aware b2b is business to business Sorry, yes, and acronyms. Yeah, that's okay, because we want to educate people too and B2C, business to consumer, right? So, um, yes, just in case for your awareness, you're not really sure that. Great question. I love what you just said, Rick. Go where your customers are, and if you can build reoccurring revenue, that's the goal. Get And, you know, really, Rick, that's what PR is. Public relations, for me, is all about building mutually beneficial relationships. And so when you can build that relationship with a client or a customer, and they know so they can depend on you to, to, to deliver with excellence. They will come back over and over and over again. And that's what we want when we're in business, people. We don't want the one-off sales. At least I don't want that. I want to work with clients that are going to keep coming back and again and again and again. And that's how your business is going to grow and be, you know, gain longevity. Would you not say, Rick? Absolutely. A, a number of decades ago, um, I had a cassette tape, yes. A cassette <laughs> tape. Just for everybody's knowledge that yes those did exist they weren't it's not just something from the past yeah um and it was from one of the um one of the guy one of the gentlemen that started amway rich devos oh. and it was interesting here's one piece that i've taken that i took from it and still hold on to it today he says i don't care what you sell but sell a consumable i make all of my money 
selling laundry detergent. Because once you had bought that box of laundry detergent, within a few weeks, you're coming back for another. Yeah. And that's that. And so how, with our own businesses, how do we create, as you're talking about, how do we create that monthly recurring revenue? How do we get that contract? How, what are we bringing to our clients that, in fact, I think it was Walt Disney said, whatever you do, do it so well that people will pay to see you do it over and over again. Love it. Do you hear that, Mule? Any more questions? Keep them coming in. I think I missed one. And I have a question for you too, Rick. Um, let's see. <laughs> have we even gotten here? We're almost wrapping up here, people. But these are great questions. Um, where was that one here? Okay, Ronald is saying he has a, a professional air conditioning refrigeration business. Do you have any tips on how to build that business? Interesting. So again, if you're talking about um, an HVAC business. Yeah. Um, you would typically be located in a community and you, you build it one client at a time, which is sort of a pat statement, but it's so true. Yeah. It's about, you know, what are you doing when you're in the house? Are you upselling, you cross selling? When you're finished, is there a sticker on the furnace or the AC that's got your name? Uh, are you, Xerox had a wonderful strategy for their salespeople. Once they had finished, they would have to do the door on the left and the door on the right. So if you're in a community and you've just finished somebody's furnace, your, you know, your van in theory has been parked outside, beautifully wrapped. You know, are you taking a handful? You have, to have many. Are you taking a handful of door hangers and just doing the four or five houses all the way around? Hey, was that your neighbors? Would love to be able to talk to you. It's about, so we go, you know, you asked me on, on the set of questions you sent to me. Yeah. You know, what was my favorite quote? Yes. And it's Maxwell. Uh, and John really says, your success is determined by your daily agenda. Mm, absolutely. What are you doing every day to drive your business forward? And so, yes, we can spend tons of money on advertising and in all media. But what are the few things that you can do every day? If you're in a community, you know, do you belong to the chamber? Do you belong to Better Business Bureau? Are you going to networking events? Are you handing your cards out to anybody that will ask you? Is your vehicle wrapped? Or is it a rolling billboard for you? And please drive carefully if you're driving that rolling billboard. Yeah. But it's those things, you know, your success is determined by your daily agenda. You said it at the very top of the, of the time of us together. You wake up every morning and you ask yourself, who can I help today? Yes. Where can I be of service? That's your daily agenda. And what's interesting about that statement, and again, this is, back to Maxwell. The interesting about that statement, Natasha, yeah. is it's got nothing to do with you. It's everything to do with everybody else. To me, that's the sign of somebody who's a true professional. You will get everything out of life that you want if you help enough other people get out of life what they want. I love it. And you know who says that too, Rick? Tony Robbins. And before I Tony that actually said that to me was Zig Ziglar. <laughs> See, and I and I and I again was able to see Ziegler live. But anyway, I know. Well, you look great. Who knows? You know, you've been around for a while, which is the greatest thing. You have this wealth of knowledge and expertise. You. you know Thank that you. we, as young business owners, essentially baby business owners that are even in our infancy stages or growing, we want to learn from people like you who are doing it and doing it well. So now I'm so glad. And that's the thing. Like when Tony said, you know what? Find out what you do, do it well, and continue. Serve. Help as many people as you can get what they need, what they yep. want, and trust that the universe will give you what you need. And that's the thing, people. When I have clients that come to me, Rick, first and say, hey, Natasha, I just want to make money. I'm like, no, you're not my ideal client because you got to have a reason why. Because truthfully so, you can make a ton of money. It's not going to fulfill you. It's not going to keep you motivated. you got to know why do you want to go into business? Who are you serving? Why do you want to serve them? And why is your product or service so great beyond the competition? And when they say, well, you know, I want to be better than X, Y, Z. No, I look at you and they say, how do you be better in your business? How do you be a better professional? How do you be a better business owner? How do you be able to deliver value to your client? Especially when the market's saturated. We got to deliver value to our clients and customers. It's so important, people. So when you're going into business. Don't just go in to make money. Yes, we need to make money. That's what a business is about. But. Make sure you're going in with an agenda that you really want to serve. 
because you love what you do. You're passionate about what you do. And that will sell itself. Because one thing we know nowadays, Rick, people can see fake. People see authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes, the internet, of all the things the internet has done, it's <laughs> exposed us to a lot of what's fake. And so we're getting better at, at going through that. You know, and you talk about the money piece. Money's vital because it's what keeps the business going. Yeah. But money is the is the reward for or is the result of the work and the effort that you put in to your clients. It's not what you go for. It is a, it is what you get because of, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to ask for my question now. People Please. Keep the questions coming in. Put them in the comments section. We got Rick for another 10 minutes. Um, so, Rick. How long have you been a business owner? I already know 30 plus years, but really let's talk about some of the challenges because we know business is not easy. What are some things you've had to overcome in business? Well, it's, you know, it's interesting because you, you know, you sent me those and I was pondering that when you sent them, I'm pondering it again today. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest challenge, I've been in business since 1985 is when I had my first company really? and, and I have done, yeah, and I have done a number of things inside that. Uh, and and had different businesses and we bought and sold them and you know it's been it's been a wonderful ride. Yeah. Uh, some things have been better than others, which is fine. Uh -huh. um, but you know, I, when I look back though, you know, what is my biggest challenge in business? My biggest challenge is staying focused. Mm. And focus means I know exactly where I want to go. Yes. Because if I don't know where I want to go, then there are no end of ways to get to know. So, you know, if you think back and maybe you read it to your daughter, Alice in Wonderland or Alice through the looking glass. Yeah. And, you know, she comes to the crossroads and she's looking both ways. And the Cheshire cat is there with a big smile. Yeah. And the cat says, well, and she goes, where should, which direction should I go? And the cat says, well, where would you like to go? Mm. Well, I don't know. Then it doesn't matter which road you take. And so if I had, if I was to pass on one piece or the one that's certainly caused me the most grief over time is that when I lose focus of where I really want to go and I lose focus because I get caught down a rabbit hole, oh, squirrel, um, I make a decision that, you know, we should try this product and I don't get out of it fast enough. And, you know, you talked about that earlier, but about being, you know, focused on what, what do you do and what do you do well? Yeah. And. So staying focused, reviewing, and you talked earlier about strategic planning. You do that. I do that. Strategic planning is about where do you want to take your business ultimately? Mm -hmm. Now, how are we going to get? But if you take your eye off the, the, end, the end piece, you certainly don't want to be in an aircraft <laughs> and the pilot's not really sure where he wants to go. Right. And we're going, you know, it's like, um, you know, I'm hoping, I was hoping you know where we were going. I'm just sitting here. So... It's so true, Rick. you know, and this is why the first activity I do with my clients is one, you to discover your purpose for your life, your business with clarity, because I know when I started my business, Rick, I wasted thousands of dollars marketing to nobody because I didn't really know who I want. I wanted to serve everyone. I didn't and I didn't take the time to figure out exactly who my ideal client was. And so people out there, you got to have direction. You got to have clarity. And I've been told to start with the end in mind. So, right? I want to have a multi-million dollar company, international company in what, five years? Ten. What does it look like? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to serve? How do you want to do it? Have that in mind so that you can build the roadblocks, the pieces. That's where the strategy comes in to take you there. And a lot of times people, we want it all now. It doesn't happen all now. You got to be patient. You got to be consistent. And you got to continue to build and build. But you got to have the strategy. And a lot of times I think, that is where a lot of business owners fall off, Rick, is that they have the business idea, but they don't want to invest in marketing or getting a consultant or a coach to help them drive the ship where they want it to go. And so I want to ask you on the flip side of everything, you talked about direction being a challenge, staying focused. What would you say is most rewarding then? Being oh, for 30 you know, in interesting you should ask that. <laughs> <laughs> what I find most rewarding is the enthusiasm that I get from the clients I work with mm -hmm. from the men and the women who, when you work with them and we find something and they, it clicks and you can just see it in their eyes. Yeah. And, and now they want to go. Yeah. Right. right. It's like now you're trying to hold them back. Hey, listen, we got some other stuff to do. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it is that, it is that enthusiasm that to me, that's what fuels my fire because that's the big reward.
Yeah. It's about, oh, you find somebody you can work with and it just is brilliant. Love it. For me, and that's what it's like for me is like when I work with a client and I see the progress, I see them succeeding at achieving their goals. I'm excited because this is a big thing for me. Your success is my success. Like when you're celebrating what you've done, I'm proud of you. I want to see you win. And I believe everybody needs to have that mentality where we all want to see each other succeed in business and do well. And you know, my take on competition, Rick, like a lot of people say, why would you bring another consultant or another coach? I don't look at it like that. There's more than enough clients out there for me. There's more than enough clients out there for you, Rick. There, people will gravitate to who they need to gravitate. So, my, so true. right? I believe in like compete against yourself, people. Compete in business, find what you do well and do it exceptionally. That's the key to being successful and do it in day in, day now. And that's the thing about why do you want to be in business? Because when times get rough, especially if you've been through COVID, a lot of businesses have had to unfortunately shut down or be on pause or have to pivot. That's the new word. You got to keep the momentum, that self-motivation. That has to come from you as the business yes. owner. You can't buy that from somebody, people. It has to come from you. All right. So um, what advice in a nutshell? We People, we got a couple more minutes left. If you have any questions for Rick on how to grow your business or maybe you're thinking about starting a business, put it in the comment section and I'll get it answered. But in the last few minutes we have, Rick, what would you say is some advice that you give to business owners on how to grow their business? Things they should be thinking of or doing or haven't probably not tried yet. So I think one of the biggest ones, Natasha, and you alluded to it, but one of the biggest ones is for a business owner to get out of their own way. Mm -hmm. And one of the big challenges is if you can deal with the person that you look at in the mirror every morning, then nothing else matters. But it's that person that's going to cause you grief because that's where the doubt is. That's where the oh no, that's where the hesitation comes and the, and the horrible self-talk. And it, so it doesn't matter to me what business you're in. It doesn't matter to me what age because I've been able to work with men and women who have just started and they're in their 20s. And I've been at folks in their 60s and, and 70s. Yes. We all have the same problem. We have negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I know that you do and do very well is that you help people get a handle on that. Yeah. But it's a big deal. Look at that person in the mirror every morning and make sure you get them into line. Then you can go ahead and face the day with its positive and its challenges. And you are, you are more able, if you don't have that self-talk, that negative self-talk, mm -hmm. your ability to be creative and see the, see the problem, see the solution, execute on it. But you can't do that if you're if you're down on the dumps. That's so true, right? Because you're the leader of the ship, essentially, people. So, and I leader of the ship, right? When you focus on, you become. If every morning you wake up and you're like, "My business is failing. I'm never going to be successful. I'm going to guarantee you." You're what right. You're okay, but if you can wake up every morning and say, "You know what? My business is full of opportunities. I'm attracting clients from all over. I'm good at what I do. I love what I do." You create that environment for seeds to grow positivity to flourish you speak life over your business naturally what you're going to see is that's what's going to happen so I'm, I'm very keen on people watch your thoughts because your thoughts become your words and your words become your behavior slash your action so if you want to have a successful business again know why you're in business why, why are you in business who are you serving what do you do well and do it every day and continue to grow and get a mentor i have a mentor rick i'm curious i didn't have this on the list but do you have a mentor or a coach that you work with to help you? I, I know you mentor oh, a lot of people already, but do you yeah, have I've been, Yeah, I've been very fortunate. I have a couple of three business clients or business owners slash friends who I have used over the years. And it is wonderful because each one of them brings something different to the table. Yeah. So depending on the answer that I want is depending on who I go and talk to. <laughs> okay. But that aside. Uh, but yeah, I have, I have surrounded myself with people who i trust mm -hmm. and they are people who have worked with me there are people who've worked for me there are people who have been my customers um there there are people that if you surround yourself uh it goes back to the old credit card advertisement what's in your wallet mm -hmm. who's in your circle if you go to maxwell's 21 irrefutable laws of leadership mm -hmm. one of the laws is the inner circle mm -hmm. and it's about who do you have around you and that is a very difficult analysis to do because 
whether they're family or whether they're friends, there's times that you have to fire them because you need to surround yourself with like-minded people. Not yes people, I'm not talking about those. Yes. But people who have the like, same thought process of you do. In other words, they're positive. They yeah. build one another up. They're excited to see you succeed, not jealous because you did. <laughs> I love, oh. Did you hear that, people? It is so true. And honestly, I keep my circle very small because Good for you. Reasons, very reasons. I don't share my vision with everybody. Very little. Maybe my mom, my dad knows my vision, the big grandiose vision. But it's so important because you know what I find? Sometimes people, they've lost hope, Rick, in their dreams. And so they want to just make sure that you don't have any dreams. They're going to talk to you out of it. They're going to say it's not possible. Or who do you think you are to want to have your own company or your own business? But people... Those are the people that you need to distance yourself from. And I say ultimately eliminate. If Absolutely. You, right? If you don't have someone in your corner who is rooting for you, I'm telling you, you're better off doing it on your own having that negative Nancy, I call her, negative Bill in your ear. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. So I didn't ask you this question. I want to ask it before we wrap up here. Who inspires you, Rick? You're amazing. You're phenomenal. You've been doing this for 30 plus years, people. You've been doing business for 30 plus years successfully. Who inspires you to keep going, Rick? So a number of years ago, almost a decade, I was uh, I went down because I was part of the initial founding members of, of Maxwell's coaching group okay. that he put together. And I had an opportunity to have dinner with John Maxwell at his place. I've been up in Edmonton with him at a couple of events where we're, we're side by side at the table. Mm -hmm. And I found that he was one of the reasons that I have that I feel comfortable using his material is that I've seen him in action. I've seen his foibles. I've seen how he acts to people. And he is, from my standpoint, I have seen him be the real meal deal. And so he's who inspires me. And he's 10 years older than I am, which thankfully there we, you know, so this is a, this is a marathon, <laughs> not a race. There is no end point. Yeah. And I'm watching John continue to, to inspire and motivate and train people around the world. And I got to tell you, if he can do it, then heck, you and I can do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Okay. As we're wrapping it, great advice. Uh, uh, you know, great is for, I love John Maxwell. I just read, what is that book? Uh, I'm losing it now. The Blue Book. You Are Your Only Limit. I'm sorry, what? You Are Your Only Limit. Or No Limits. No Limits. No Limits. It's called No Limits. But I can say, you are your only limit, people. Truthfully. If Truthfully. You're it it can achieve it but don't talk yourself out of it there's a reason why you came up with that idea and now's the time to put it forward so rick i'm going to give you some time to talk a little bit about your program or your offerings what do you do how do you help people and how do they connect with you well thank you so our whole focus is helping clients become dispensable mm -hmm. and inside of that we do strategic planning and we do leadership training mm -hmm. and we have a 250 question free questionnaire that we would love to go through with anybody. And what that does is it helps us to get a snapshot of where your business is today. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to get to. It's mymacinc.com and the connections are there. Uh, the advantage now, of course, with all the platform and the new ring light that I have here that appears to be working well. I love and <laughs> the, you know, these things can all be done on, on uh, uh, you know, on online. Mm -hmm. uh, I have had the privilege over the last 12 years. I'm an outstanding external consultant for Business Development Bank of Canada. So I work with BDC cool. and their clients. And, you know, we do, we just really enjoy helping business owners achieve that specific goal, which is become dispensable. So they can work on, not in. I love it. I didn't know that you actually worked with BDC. That's a bank, people, for those of you who are in Canada. Business Development Center, is that Bill, it? Business Development Bank of Canada. Bank of Canada, I'm thinking about. So yeah, I didn't know that, that's awesome. So okay, people, feel free to follow Rick. At, you'll see him in the profile here, but what is your, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Do you know what your Instagram handle is? Um, I was gonna say it's Mac Inc. Coaching. Why, Mac Inc. Coaching, Mac Inc. Coaching. There it is, let me see at the top. Yeah, Mac Inc. Coaching. So feel free to follow Rick. Again, he is the type of man that will, if you're in Canada or Calgary, I should say, make time to meet with you for coffee. Absolutely, and, and that's that's how I met Rick. I got a referral through Bandy um, to meet with Rick, and he was just nice enough to meet with coffee. And he spelled 
he spent a good hour sharing so much things I could do to enhance my business when I was just starting out. And so, Rick, I want to thank you again for your time thank today. Thank you. And for all of you who joined, great questions, people. Um, Rick, last, any last words, anything else you want to say before we log off? No, you know, this. at the end of the day, the COVID is just one more thing. And there'll be something after that. Sun's still going to come up tomorrow. Yeah. We still got, you know, we have, we're living in a great time in history where, you know, when you think about some of the other pandemics, they didn't know what was going on with friends and family. Mm -hmm. We can talk to people around the world without hesitation anytime we want. So I, I've watched people that I know who have relatives in other countries have had a chance to read bedtime stories to their grandchildren that they never got before. Uh. And connect with, you know, friends or family who maybe there was a little on the outs. But this kind of thing makes everybody realize, you know what? Life is special. It's a great time to connect with people. Absolutely. Just a wonderful time. Love it. And this, and this too shall pass. Yes, I just said that in one of my videos, I think, weeks ago. People, just know, it's not permanent. This too shall pass. But ask yourself, how will you come out after COVID? Will you be the same person? I'm hoping not. I'm hoping you'll have more knowledge, you know, in your area of expertise, or you'll spend some more time investing in yourself. Don't spend all your hours on Netflix, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Find that. Invest in yourself. Get a coach. Get a mentor. Uh, start the business, get out people and do great things because we all have something within us that the world needs. Okay. So Rick, I'm going to thank you again today for joining me. My pleasure. Thank amazing. you. <laughs> I'll see you at a, new, a future, hopefully uh, in person event. An event at somewhere at some time. <laughs> we will connect again soon again. Thank you so much, Rick. You've been amazing and we'll talk soon. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> right. Beautiful people of Queens and Kings. Wasn't that amazing? time with Rick. I learned a lot myself. I hope you guys did too. Again, for me, I'm all about working with you to achieve your goals and your dreams. And there's a way, there's ways I do that. So how can you connect with me? Go to NatashaBRussell.com. N-A-T-A-S-H-A-B-R-U-S-S-E-L-L.com and book your free 30 minute consultation with me. I want to talk with you about life, about business, relationships, money, health, whatever it may be. And I want to help you to figure out what you really want to show up in your life and then create the strategy and then hold you accountable. People, invest in yourself. That is the number one thing I want to say. In business, get a mentor, get a coach, get someone that can help you bring your business from A to B to C. All right? There's a lot of people out there that have a lot of knowledge that you may not have. And that's the gift of collaboration. So if you want to do great things, again, eliminate people from your circle who are not motivating you who don't want to see you succeed. We don't got time for that, people, right? Surround yourself with people who are doing great things. Gain a mentor. Gain a, a, a coach to help you bring the dream to fruition. But more importantly, people, I want to leave you with this. Be confident. Be confident in who you are. Truly. Because there's no one like you. Be fearless enough to pursue what sets your soul on fire. Be bold enough to own your greatness. Because there's no one in this world like you. But last but not least, be you. Don't compare yourself to anyone. Don't look at social media and say, oh, I wish I looked like this. I wish I had this. Look at yourself in the mirror every day and say, how can I become my best self? How can I become the best version of me? And that's what it's all about, people. And you do that in life and you do that in business and you show up day in and you day out. You consistently work toward the dream. And I'm telling you, doors will open for you. But if you don't start, how are you going to know, right? Again, so thank you for joining me, people. Visit me at NatashaBRussell.com. Book your free consult. I would love to work with you. Boss up for your goals and your dream because now is the time, people.